and she has simply asked me not to use her any other name, and she's going to be talking about this the West of Sahara.
integrated zone, maybe a few thousand, and a very small diaspora. There are very few people from Western Sahara living anywhere else. A fair number go abroad for education, to Cuba, to Spain, to other countries in Europe. But they tend to want to return back to the refugee camps because they have a very strong cultural and family tie to, the, to their, own, their own culture. They speak a form of Arabic, which is uh, unique to them. They consider themselves uh, a separate uh, culture. And they formed a government in exile. Their, their country is called the Sahrawi Arab Democratic Republic. It is recognized by about 45 countries. It changes uh, back and forth because of the political changes of some of the other governments. But it is a member of the African Union. It's recognized by nearly every country in Africa. And Morocco is not a member of the African Union. It's the only African country which is not. There is no country in the world, including Canada, which recognizes officially the occupation of Western Sahara by Morocco. Morocco now treats it as though it's an external province. The census does not separate the Sahrawi people from the Moroccans who live there. In fact, there may well be far more Moroccans living in Western Sahara now than Morocco, uh, than uh, Sahrawi people. Of several of the camps are women, many of the professional people. 
uh, in the government of exile, in exile, they had just had elections, and they have the second highest number of women members of parliament in the world. After Rwanda, they build also some uh, mud, mud buildings out of uh, clay sand that they find on the desert. So those are indigenous buildings. They are de totally dependent on, it's a totally unsustainable life. They are totally dependent on the United Nations and Algeria. Uh, they get food aid from the World Food Program, which is diminishing apparently as fewer and fewer donations are given. Uh, there is widespread uh, malnutrition and anemia, particularly among children. As a result, <coughs> they get their water, their power, and their technological aid, and their highways from Algeria. Uh, those are water tanks. In our camp, there was no well. Some of the camps have wells, and so the water was delivered by Algeria. And you can see them resting on the cans of uh, no doubt genetically modified corn oil, which is USAA. <laughs> The United States always labels all its aid, so you certainly know when you go to a market in Africa and buy uh, a, a sack of something which is not to be sold USA aid, uh, you know you're going to pay a good price. Uh, that's what happens to a lot of aid, but not here. Uh, it does get distributed to the families and the, the social and political organization of the camps is uh, very fair and equitable. Uh, one of the few sources of food they have is it's part of their culture that women keep goats. So some people uh, have goats in enclosures, but they do have to find food for the goats and sometimes share their own food as well as kitchen scraps for them. These are my hostess and host. On, on the left, uh, Aminatou, uh, Fatimatou and her husband, Suleiman, and they are still waiting to return home. I was there for the 38th anniversary of the founding of their nation, which was a day of celebration. Uh, very little military presence. It was mostly children and music and cultural activities. And uh, it culminated with a, a, a mad ride through the crowd uh, with, the, with the camels. Mm. And behind you can see their traditional tents, which are made of strips of brown hand-woven wool. And those are, are the real Sahrawi tents. And they were full of example, examples of people playing, playing traditional games, weaving, sewing, uh, traditional medicine, traditional forms of education. Everybody dressed in their tribal finery. They have a very highly developed healthcare system. Uh, every every camp has a, has a hospital, and the, the main camp has a hospital that does fairly advanced surgery. And every camp has about nine to ten, depending on which camp. This one had seven uh, clinics in which women go to have their babies. They have well baby clinics, inoculations. But they are very concerned about anemia and the lack of food for children. I just, uh, this is in the paper. The paper is here. You can take it. It's a, a first draft, and there are a few mistakes in it. But you can get uh, the finished draft off the internet tomorrow, and it will also show. The, um, Teresa, you don't mean 333 million people, do you? So where Morocco, Morocco has 33 million people. 33 million. You have a 30, 333. Well, that's because I have immaculate degeneration numbers jump around. Thank you. Uh, and I don't always catch my, my numerical errors. It's, it's held the telephone numbers. But these are some of their obstacles to pieces because they are a small population. There are very few of them in diaspora, so there's very little global awareness. Uh, no large global power supports Western Sahara. They're not terrorists. They don't believe in terrorism, and they don't believe in suicide bombing. They think it's cowardly. And they have never performed an act of terrorism. Uh, so they have no mass media appeal. It, it doesn't lead, so it doesn't lead. They are not fundamentalists, and so the fundamentalist Islamic countries do not support them. And the president has said the reason that the fundamentalists hate them is that they believe in both democracy and, the, and equality of women. So Morocco has 33 million people, and it has, uh, it's very uh, supported by, by the Western powers, as I said, the gateway to the Mediterranean. And the <clears throat> last point is that in occupied Western Sahara, 
Uh, Morocco markets um, the extremely rich deposits of phosphates, which you were complaining about going to the ocean. Uh, they come out of, they sell them to fertilizer companies. They have the fishing rights to the European Union. And now they're doing offshore petroleum exploration, and there's some uh, exploration for diamonds in the south near Mauritania. So Western uh, Europe, and it's Total, the French company, which has most of the uh, rights to do the offshore petroleum exploration. The advantages of for peace is that there are actually many countries with few people, and uh, they have, uh, they believe in equality of women, uh, sexual mutilation is unknown. Uh, I couldn't find any evidence or anybody who had ever heard of domestic abuse. Uh, they believe in nonviolent resistance. I want to move on to this was the Association for the Political Prisoners and for the Disappeared. These are pictures of the disappeared. Uh, there are still four to six hundred people missing from the uh, war with Morocco, who was losing bodies have not been found, although they are in the process of exhuming some, the Spaniards have been exhuming some graves, mass graves. And so these pictures were painted by a Spanish, a 